That was almost the intro to uh, Cowboy Bebop. Did you say buck ass? <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said podcast, didn't I, Braden? You did. Anyway, this is uh, Hack the Dino's Gaming Cast, where I, Ben Rosenthal, the uh, stalwart of fascism. Wait, no, that's bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought uh, you said stalwart fascism. <laughs> Why can't I right? hear anything today? <laughs> Uh, bring you the past, present, and future of video game news. I am joined by the ever youthful and aspirant. I don't even know if that's a word. Floppy Staric. Oh, hello. I uh, don't ask me if it's a word. I apparently don't know English. Uh, Brayden's also here. Hello there, kids. Uh, uh, Brayden's a horse, and Floppy <laughs> is uh, bad here, man. Yeah, not um, bad hair, man. Great no, hair, oh, man. No, you've all got great, great hair. Great hair, man. Jealous. Bad hair, man. Hey, Brandon, can you grow a beard? Hi ho, Silver ain't got shit on me. <laughs> well, Wilbur, get your hand out of my ass. Hey, so um, we're going to talk about why the GameCube was seen as a failure uh, when it launched way back in uh, whenever. Um, 2001, I think. And we're going to talk about the best GameCube games to get for this failure of a console. And talk about some of the awesome uh, peripherals and some of the games that went with those awesome peripherals. And I actually mean it this time. This isn't a Ben thing where I go, they're awesome, and it's like a fishing pole. Uh, these are actual... <laughs> or a freaking sewing machine. <laughs> Don't give it away. Uh, but all that, and much, much more. But first, 20 years ago... A neat little console came out that was very poorly received, even though it was portable. That's right, it ladies. It had a handle Gentlemen, built in. and everyone in between, I'm talking about the GameCube. Completely <sighs> underrated console. And before you get excited, on the screen now, it's not a meme. I decided not to get the meme. Thank you. But uh, I, I do love the GameCube. Uh, I, this is a whole segment on why it failed, what it did, what it didn't do, the best games for it. So if you are after some GameCube knowledge, we're about to smack it over your face. Can I go through the sales? Yeah, go through the sales. Worldwide sales. Mm -hmm. 21.75 million. On the screen now, we can see Shigeru Miyamoto in a lovely tan suit. <laughs> That's great. Look, I love that it had a handle built in. Yeah, it's great. So you could go shopping and take yeah. your, your GameCube for yeah, reasons. Right. Reasons. Uh, in the Americas, 12.94 million in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, 4.04 million in other regions. I read this wrong. You did read it very Worldwide, well. Worldwide, it was 21.75 <laughs> million. You should have put a comma or something in there. Oh, you should learn to uh, read. The Americas, 12.94 million. In Japan, it was weird that it only sold 4.04 .04 million in Japan. Yeah, it wasn't very popular. That's... I wonder why. Oh, I don't know. I wonder if it had anything to do with, like, like the controllers were quite large. Well, I have that was a, a big problem that I had with the Xbox as well. I have it on good authority from Josh Tunes in the live chat that uh, no other console with a handle has sold more. So, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, other regions, which are Australia, Australia and New Zealand, four point seven seven million. So still more than Japan. That's really weird. I would not have thought it would have been that low. Now I uh, didn't get a GameCube at launch. No. Um, I ended up getting one eventually, but uh, it really did. It was the first console uh, that I didn't buy straight away or wasn't clamoring to have. You and I got a GameCube. Uh, yeah, I do. It was about a year ago. Not even. It was July this year. Oh, was it? Because I loaned you the money for it. We were at the toy fair. Um, so why did it fail? Why was it not popular? Uh, Floppy, do you want to kick it off? Yeah, man. So, um, it relied very heavily on first party properties. Mm -hmm. Uh, they managed to get Capcom for the Resident Evil remake and Resident Evil 4, which was great. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. As well as uh, the Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Mm -hmm. Also fantastic. You picked that up this year. I did. Two copies uh, of it. But not much in the way of third-party devs came over. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's sort of isolating a lot of people. Yep. Uh, Nintendo's first-party games were among the best of the generation, but gamers were looking for new ideas, mm -hmm. something different. Uh, Microsoft and Sony were able to acquire far more third-party support, and that hurt the GameCube's library because their library just grew exponentially. Well, yeah, you look at uh, what games are coming out on the PS1. PS2, no, PS2, uh, PS2 man. It had, yeah. it, uh, surely that must be one of the biggest libraries when it comes to gaming, PS2. Well, I don't know. It's the most uh, sold uh, It's the highest ever. selling console, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a DVD. Oh, 
DVD player. Yeah, DVD player. Oh, we'll, we'll talk we'll about get that. To that. We'll get to that. Uh, another player. reason why the GameCube wasn't received favor- favorably and uh, at the time was thought of as a failure was that it had no online integration where the other two very much did. Uh, the GameCube had no true line on so- online support, and this significantly hurt its appeal. Despite the PlayStation 2's somewhat rudimentary online service, they were at least able to compete with Microsoft's more sophisticated Xbox Live. Mm. The GameCube's lack of online service was viewed as a m- uh, viewed by many as a missing feature, and and this is the um, the start of sort of the the real. Uh, the battle. So we had the PlayStation and the Xbox and the Nintendo 64 previously. Yeah. Uh, and then they, I think there was a little bit of crossover with them. But the GameCube just fell way, way behind because it wasn't cutting edge. It was in typical Nintendo fashion. And I say this as a safe. Nintendo fan. They play it very safe. They go, no, this is what we're doing. This is what it does. So they're really, really innovative. But then they're not at all. Yeah. They are just a really confusing company. It really depends on... It's like they skip a generation for being innovative and then have a safe generation and then skip a generation of being innovative and they're innovative and... Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just going to jump in and take this next one from you, Floppy, because it's it. something I want to talk about because it's one of the main reasons I didn't get a console at the time. Uh, lackluster launch titles on the GameCube. So the launch titles for the GameCube were Wave Race, Super Monkey Ball... Star Wars Rogue Squadron, and Luigi's Mansion. Now, three of those games are fantastic. Uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron is one of my favorite games of all time. I've played that over and over again. I've got that one. Um, Wave Race is a really, really good game. Don't know it. Uh, Really? No. Wave Race, something blue or something. Uh, Super Monkey Ball, not a bad... You know, it's a game. It's probably the weakest of of the um, uh, Nintendo GameCube launch titles. Uh... But Luigi's Mansion was sort of like what they were relying on. Now, don't get me wrong. Luigi's Mansion is an excellent game. Excellent game. But people wanted Mario. Yes. And like they, I still remember at the time when GameCube launched or was launching, they were making a big song and dance about how it was Luigi's turn, how it was Luigi's time to stand up and and take um, you know the the spotlight away from his brother a little bit. Uh, Luigi sucks ass. This is this is proven. You remember uh, during the Wii U, there was the year of Luigi? Yeah. Guess which year was, it was the Nintendo's death of, Was it the death worst, of the Wii U? It was the worst performing <laughs> financial year on record. The year of Luigi. That's got to be all of the Wii U's life, though. <laughs> My point being, the launch titles, like, launch titles are really important. You um, say that. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, we saw that with the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 launch. Uh, you need to have games that are available to play. Otherwise, you've just got a box sitting there doing nothing. Look at the Nintendo 64. You had Pilot Wings, which was eh, but you had Mario 64, which is one of the greatest games of all time. It's really, really important you nail that I think um, it was, launch. I think it was more important then too, because with the PS5 and with the Series X and Series S, you can play the last-gen games. Mm. So you can get that console, pick up a game that's available, and still play your old games. You didn't have that choice. No. With a GameCube or with a 64. He didn't play the last games because they were a different format. It was a completely different thing. And he also didn't have an online store to go and purchase games. <laughs> no. So if there were, like, for example, Luckluster Games and two of them were really cool, like Star Wars and Luigi's Mansion, mm. and everyone who bought a GameCube bought those two games, guess what? You're not getting those games. No. Nah. Um, um, having said that, Luigi's Mansion is a great game. It is. I've never played this one. I've only ever played two and three. It's stupid expensive to get. Yeah, it's so hard to get. Well, not stupid expensive, but you know, it's just too hard to get. People don't sell it, and then when they do sell it, they want too much. Yep. Well, no, they don't want too much. They want a lot. It's not more than I'm willing to pay. Speaking of paying, floppy. Uh, <laughs> what else did they do? They lost Rare. Yeah, we touched on. We this just, just touched before. on this before. So yeah. Microsoft purchased Rare and all of its properties. Nintendo had a chance to match the offer. They chose not to because they do odd things sometimes. It's Nintendo being Nintendo. They're one of the most successful companies that do some of the dumbest things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. And then other times they make these amazing groundbreaking decisions and and business proposals and they just win at everything at other times. Uh, So people moved over to the Xbox after feeling like they were sort of betrayed by this, by losing this game dev that had bought some of the greatest SNES titles. Mm. Um. And you've put in a note here that says, and fuck Donkey Kong 64. Yep, because that game's trash. Braden, care to comment? DK. <laughs> <laughs> really though, Donkey Kong 64, what an awful game. Has the most collectibles out of any Nintendo game ever. I've got it. Never played it because I don't have the goddamn expansion pack. Oh, really? Nah, I need one. 
Uh, Even how there's got a, a expansion pack for the 64, just laying around. I played uh, Banjo Kazooie know. recently. That game still really holds up. Really yeah. fun game. Yeah, really, really fun. Love it. Uh, this is an up-res version, by the way. This is hey, this is not what it looked like. <laughs> What's the next? 64. What's the next reason? Uh, well, I reckon you should take this one, actually. Age perception? Uh, actually, no, I'll take age perception. I was looking at the DVD player. Oh, spoiler. Uh, the next reason why the GameCube was not successful at launch or during its time in the sunshine. Uh, age perception. Nintendo is for kids. Uh, we've all heard that argument. Well, it started here. Uh, the GameCube didn't have any real mature games. Uh, it had Resident Evil 4 and Eternal Darkness, which is very collectible oh, I nowadays. Want Eternal Darkness. Like, super, super rare now yeah, and really, really expensive. Uh, older gamers, and in uh, quotation marks, I put teens, uh, went to places where they could have their faces ripped off and used as paper planes. Oh, you mean Mortal Kombat? Yeah, so basically, people. Well, Mortal Kombat 5 was on GameCube because I played that a lot. But um, not till much later, though. Right? Much, much later. Not till they'd sort of got into the whole, well, maybe we should have some mature content. Mm. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I still love the GameCube. Uh, I love it even more now. And it's known as a very uh, sought-after console uh, with a lot of really, really cool games. And it really is. But uh, during the day, nope. It's only now that we've got the whole collection that people are actually seeing. Actually, this is a really good console with a really good lineup. It's like a cult movie. It's came it's came into its time and gotten popular after its time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> of course, one of my favorite parts of the GameCube, you know, they released some HD um, cords for it. So you could play it. Yeah, HD. the component card. The component, component cards, cards, yeah. yeah. They are stupid expensive, like man. Like $300. Yeah, it is ridiculous. I'd but love that's to have that some. in a box. It's just to get those cords, 300 bucks. Just for the component cable. And they do make a massive difference. Yep. Because they split that video cable into the three primary colors for the video. And yep. it's just so crisp. And oh, man. One day. One day. One day. All right. What's the other All reason? Right. Next bit. No DVD player, GameCube. Because you used mini discs. You used mini discs, which were cool. Mini discs. mini discs were cool. They I were. I love them. They were great. A lot um, less storage than DVDs, though. A lot less, well, you know, the games didn't require it. But when you're going up against, say, PS2 and Xbox, which exactly. had DVD players, I know so many people that bought a PS2 to use as a DVD player. They didn't, didn't play games. Because they were cheaper than a Yeah, it was DVD cheaper player. than yeah. a DVD player. Yeah, ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so DVDs were the latest technology at the time. Not having that ability to play them really cost them. Uh, who would have thought that Nintendo ignoring trends of the people would want to financially hurt them? Uh, but they got that right in the end, didn't they? No. No, they not, didn't. Not a little bit. Never. <laughs> As I said earlier in the show, they're uh, an innovative company and come across some amazing steps forward. But Nintendo is like the epitome of one step forward, two steps back. It's really frustrating at times. It's 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 odd, but yeah. Um, having said that, having said all of that, mm -hmm. how good does the GameCube look? Fantastic. Like, like if you were fantastic. to rate sexiness of a console, you want to see a sexy con. All right, I'll go get a sexy console. No, no, no. no I'm going to go get a sexy console. I'm going to start reading next yep. bit without you. Go for it. All right. The next part is the best GameCube games. So we've got a, uh, a collection of GameCube games that we think you should own. Uh, okay, what have you got? I've got a sexy console. He's got a sexy console. I don't want to reveal it yet. All right. Oh, okay, this one. This is actually pretty cool. So, Nintendo, well known for having variants of consoles. Very much so. We've got a 64. So there is a very popular baseball team over in Japan called the Hanshin Tigers. Uh, very, very popular. They won uh, the World Series in 98, I want to say, but I could be completely wrong. I don't oh, you watch can see it. Baseball. Anyway, uh, this is a GameCube, the Hanshin Tigers GameCube. I got in Japan my last trip there for like uh, $80, I think. <laughs> can I say, it is definitely a cool console. It's not the sexiest one. Are you kidding me? Nah, not even. What is not sexy about that? It's pinstripe. Yeah, like their uniforms. It's cool. Look it's not sexy. Sexy is different. Brayden, is this console sexy or cool? You have other consoles Take over there that are... The <laughs> sexy, isn't it? I dare you to pitch it, Townsy says. <laughs> so this came with, as you can see there, a controller, which I haven't been able to find. Um, it also came with a jersey. Uh, going box, these things are really expensive. Even this is a couple of hundred dollars just like this. And this is a little bit yellowed. Um, but I remember being in a, uh, in Japan, in a game store and seeing this on the shelf, just wrapped up sitting there 
And King Kaiju was also in Japan, but in another part of Japan because yeah. I was there for karate training. So I do karate. You like karate? I do karate. Yeah, Brad, yeah, you know I do karate. Oh, yeah. I do karate. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he was in a different part of Japan. So I sent him a photo of it and he just went, I've never seen one of them in the <laughs> wild before. And I went, guess what? You'll see one because I'm buying it. So there it is. What a cool console that was. Nintendo really do some really awesome. It is cool. It's not your sexiest. The yellow or orange one is the sexiest. What do they call it? Orange? Is it orange? What was the color called? I don't know. A, a puke orange. Puke orange. orange. That was the sexiest one. Bile orange. Uh, best GameCube games, man. Yeah, all right. Let's get into some First of them. First one, Mario Kart Double Dash. I now, correct me. Oh, now, I, I, did, I've, I managed to pick this one relatively recently. I've oh, got really? it. Yeah, I haven't played it yet, though. But um, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the only Mario Kart where there is like a, a second person on the cart, yeah? Correct. Yep. And uh, you could also play two player like that on the same team. Yeah. Would you? Mm-hmm. Is it any good to play two player like that? I've uh, never I done played it. it a couple of times with my friend back then. Is one, one person fellow... just driving, one person just operating power ups? Yep. And then you can switch. So and one person's driving, and then you can switch uh, positions. All yeah, right. And how annoying does it get? Uh, super. <laughs> no, yeah. It's a great game. <laughs> I wonder why they only ever did one where you had. But to, again, it's uh, Nintendo rider. being uh, innovative. Yeah, they did. Um, they tried something new. Something new, and it paid off. This game was great, but they haven't gone back to it since. It j- just looks like a really nice, polished version of uh, Mario Kart 64. It, it looks really nice. I yeah. like it. And it's a super fun game. What was uh, our second best GameCube game? Well. <laughs> I always was going to be talking about this one, wasn't I? Of course you were. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes. That's right. A remake of Metal Gear Solid, Hideo Kojima's opus, was made remade specifically uh, for the Nintendo GameCube. Um, I regret not playing this when it first came out. I've never played this. Really? Nope. Because I don't own it because it's too goddamn expensive. You know I've got two copies in there. Oh, fuck off. (laughs) How much do you want for one? they, They had different cases. Uh, no, one of them came from uh, our very own Dan McGuinness. Oh, Dan. I swapped him a game gear for it. Actually, I remember that. I was there, I think. <laughs> That's right, because we were trying to work out what I was going to swap for it. And I said, hey, Dan, what about Metal Gear Solid? He goes, oh, just that. Nothing else, right? And I went, yep. And he went, yep. Score. So he got a game gear and I got Metal Gear Solid. Uh, anyway, this Did is great. beneficial. Uh, Twin, Twin Snakes is fantastic. I played it the other day when I got my Wave Bird. Oh, Wave Bird. I got a Wave Bird off you, I believe. You did. You got that off me. Uh, I will swap you for a Twin Snakes. No. Damn it. I paid you money for that. Yeah, no, I'll give back to you for a Twin Snakes. Anyway, this is fantastic. Uh, the original cast came back, re-recorded their lines. Uh, it was completely remastered from the ground up. Uh, just a spectacular game made even better. I, I just love it so much. Um, if you've got uh, it's come down in price now it's not around $200 it's around 150 so yeah. all ga- I've noticed just recently GameCube games are starting to go on a bit of a dip and I really appreciate you putting uh, Revolver Ocelot in this uh, cutscene Braden yeah it's got my favourite boy in there good old Revolver Ocelot I like Grey Fox do you? yep I'm a big fan of any cyborg ninja really well that's fair I like his voice too yeah yeah he had the coolest voice I like Revolver Ocelot's uh, he's a he's a four way spy I Soldier? completely gave up trying to figure it out. I'll sit down and tell you. No, was. please don't. No, I'd... I've tried to watch videos. It just makes my brain I'll kick. explain it to you. I've, I've got it all up here. I've read it many, many a time. Uh, all all right. right, next one. Next one. We have spoke about it and we've touched on it before. Star Wars Rogue Leader. Great game. Have you played this one? Yes, I own this one. This one and number two. Excellent. Both fantastic games. Fantastic games. Possibly you... the best Star Wars games. Just yeah. find that out. So there. like I used to throw out, well, I wouldn't say the best Star Wars games. I'd say the best really? Star Wars flight sims. Yeah, okay. Fair yeah. enough. So like I used to be all about the X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. Look at that. That's on a Look GameCube. Look at that. No, That's a GameCube. It's up It is up <laughs> It's on up <up-res-ed> GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> um, like I'm a big Star Wars fan. I'm pretty sure everyone knows that anyway. Uh, I loved my TIE Fighter versus X-Wing that I used to have back in the day on the PC. And I thought that thing was the bomb diggity man. And then I played this. Mm. And I'm like, get fucked. This is great. Yeah. Yep. And I haven't um, played one. Like I played the flying missions in uh the battlefronts i've played squadrons i still think this is better yep the best bit about this game as well the very first level you play is the death star trench run yeah that's the very first level you get in yeah it's just like right in there they, um there's also you what you want straight away yeah yeah you, you're right in on it you of course do hoth as well at some point yeah um but then you've also got uh a level where you're going through the asteroid belt and empire yeah and you're shooting um 
asteroids as well as TIE fighters yeah. that come in. And it's got the... Dun, dun, yeah. dun, 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 and all the uh, Lucasfilm sound effects. It's and just it, so Honestly, good. as a kid playing it, I felt like I was playing the movie. Yeah. I used to sit there and try and get uh, platinum medals. I was... All the levels. I was like, damn, I am Luke Skywalker. It was... Oh. oh what a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic game. Fantastic. Everyone that has a GameCube should get it if you like Star Wars. If you don't like Star Wars, play something else. Play Mario Kart. But if you like Star Wars, play this. Now, Anto, our social media guru who's in the chat, also wanted to pipe in two of his choices for great <laughs> yeah. GameCube games. So the first of those is F-Zero. Um, it's called F-Zero oh, Extreme or something like that. I don't know. I'm yeah, I played. can't remember which what the, the rest of the tagline Anyway, was. it's the last one we, we ever got um, because after this, they... GX, thank you, Anto. Thank uh, you. They uh, turfed this franchise to the ground and we haven't I, seen them since. I don't understand why. It's a great franchise. Yeah, really super fast, uh, hyperkinetic uh, racing game. Uh, very different from Mario in that it is a pure racing game. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the storyline is, oh, you're this guy, you want to win. You want to beat the other guys. And that's all you need. It's, yeah, um, very reminiscent. Like, they kept, I don't know why they didn't keep going. Like, they saw what PlayStation did with, like, Wipeout mm. and stuff like that. And this is, basically, Wipeout is this, is F-Zero. Um, I don't know why they stopped. Like, I think they could bring this back. And now on, like, HD sort of consoles and stuff, this would look amazing. Oh, yeah. And just, yeah, the, the speed, that like, not speed, but, like, the illusion of speed while playing a game now would be fantastic i remember playing this and you legitimately after looking after playing for a while and then looking away i felt like the rest of the world goes so slow because you get so used to looking at this thing at a bajillion miles an hour mm. uh yeah. what's the next game we got there floppy next game we've got is another pick of antos so i think this is going to make every person's list no matter what uh smash brothers melee now, as far as I were... No, I'm not a huge Smash Bros. fan. Yep. I have trouble with these games because I cannot... I'm an old man and I can't keep track of who I goddamn am on there and I keep watching someone else. Um, but from what I understand, this is Floppy's like... Floppy's old, everyone, just in case you didn't work that out. Yeah, uh, I'm old. I'm still pretty cool, though. Uh, just ask my mum. She tells me all the time. Uh, but as far as I'm, I'm aware, this is still highly regarded as like the best of the Smash Bros. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty up there. I it's mean, the one they, they still play this in Evo. tournaments, though. Yeah, yeah, Evo. St this is still the Evo yeah. one. Um, Ultimate, I think, is giving it a run for its money. And I think it will because it contains bits of everything. Yeah, uh, this the single player in this was mind blowingly good. Um, I forget what it was called now, but like the single player, what was really good, you unlock some characters while you're playing the single player. Yeah. Uh, and I still remember I came up to the last level and Master Hand was up this stairway and you had to go defeat him. And the last three fighters who were left were, I think, Link, Zelda and Ganon. And they sort of like looked at each other and went, hmm. yeah, and they all decided to, to go in it together. And they started walking up and then Master Hand came down and just sort of wiped them out. Everyone but I think Link or maybe Sheik. And then Master Hand was about to kill them and all of a sudden there was this... Pew! this blue blur just came in and, bum, 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 yeah. and it went boom and then it stopped and the camera spun around and froze and it was Sonic and he went hey <laughs> and like that was the first time Sonic had been in a Nintendo game this was his first appearance and I just remember to use a, uh, a sophisticated wrestling terminology I popped my tits off damn weird visuals yeah yeah oh man fantastic game uh this was the i believe first one that had the trophies as well where you earn coins oh, okay. through the mini games and then yep. you put them into a gachapon and i like i hundred i legitimately hundred percent of this game i, I got every think. single trophy my friend and i used to sit there this is when i was in high school so we used to sit there after high school every day playing this playing golden eye playing all these games and just hundred percenting everything yeah oh Amazing back when game. you had time to finish games. Yeah, back when I had time to play them. <laughs> and thank you. I was trying to think of the word Gatchapon the other day. <laughs> Couldn't you're, get into it. You just reminded me. It's great. You're welcome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, this would have to be the one that Snake came into. As well. It is, yes. Yeah, because the Twin Snakes yep. got him into Nintendo. Yep. You're playing in um, the island. Shadow Moses. Shadow Moses, thank you. And then you hear like uh, there's warning lights go and then the wall breaks down and there's Metal Gear Rex <laughs> just behind yeah. you and it starts to fire on you. Oh. I love Metal Gear Rex. Oh, man. My favorite Metal Gear. Yep, it's fantastic. All right, next one. You can have the next one, Floppy. Uh, I'll do the next one. So next one, big fan of my... Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of It. No, it's a big uh, fan of you. It's, a big, it's, it's also a big fan of me. Resident Evil 4. Yeah. So took a franchise that was known for static cameras, that was known for tank controls... 
and flipped it third person, gave it some motion, and just just fucking knocked it out of the park. Really, yeah. This Still, thing became one of the like most iconic Resident Evil games. Now they've remade this a lot. They've remastered, remastered a lot. I still think the GameCube version is the best version. Um, or are you a Wii person? No, no. Uh, I'm not particularly. I liked it. I like every re- iteration. I liked it on the GameCube. Uh, I've never. I haven't finished it on the GameCube. I finished it on the Wii. Mm-hmm. I didn't mind the motion controls on that. I didn't find them too janky. Uh, I played it again on the PS4. Um, I don't have a copy on the GameCube. I'd like to get one. But yeah, once again, expensive. Just got a correction from Anto in the chat. I was talking about Brawl, not Melee. Oh well, I, I'm loopy tonight. So that's a correction. Um, it was entertaining. <laughs> it was At the entertaining. end of the day, if you were entertained, who gives a shit about the facts? <laughs> Next one's for you. Uh, Metroid Prime, of course, appeared on the uh, GameCube. I remember when I was younger. Uh, so much younger than today. Uh, is, oh, don't we get DMC? Uh, DMC. <laughs> Run DMC will come in and tell you to stop singing. And then we'll get some DLC. <laughs> yeah. And download after the show. Uh, yeah, Metro Prime. This was the first one where they announced that it was going to first person as opposed to a side scroller uh, and not a Metroidvania. Dum, dum, dum. A lot of people were pretty apprehensive, yeah? They were very apprehensive. Until they played it? Until they played it. And we just went, oh, actually, this game is amazing. Uh, spawned two sequels, Metroid Prime 2 and 3, and a 4 to come, which we haven't seen anything of. Uh, we also spawned Metroid Other M, but that game's trash. Don't worry about it. Is that the Wii one? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Not a good game. At all. Damn it, think I've got it. And Lucky Last is possibly one of my favourite Zelda games. And um, can I just say, first GameCube game I got really as a Christmas present from uh, two of my kids. What? Recently? A couple of years ago. I got it and I was playing it on the Wii because I didn't have a GameCube. Oh right. Um yeah, Wind Waker. What what a what a f- amazing game. Again, likewise. Uh, previous to this, we saw a tech demo at E3, which showed a hyper-realistic, gritty link mm. fighting a giant spider, I believe. Yep. Um, and everyone thought that's what it was going to be. And then they released this Toon Link, or as they called it at the time, Zelda, because it's cell shaded. Cell shaded. So C E L D A. I love cell shaded stuff, man. Uh, this game had so much character, so much heart. Uh, it, it was just a wonderful game to play. I, I cannot put into words how amazing it is uh the only thing that annoyed me when playing it is the second what we thought when you, you're chasing the orbs and the second orb you uh, have to beat the pirates to a cave and mm. you knock down the wall and there's uh, a big fish there and he just gives it to you and then <laughs> i went oh what that, that, that's got to be a little anticlimactic there, there's got to be a missing dungeon there and sure enough they did cut it for time uh game boy dad in the chat has said paper mario the thousand year door is a bit stiff to not make the cut yeah well guess what game boy dad this is our show and we'll, we'll make cuts to whatever we like rough i like super paper mario but hey i've never played it so that's why i didn't make the cut i like the new one <laughs> you like yeah, which one? you did like you the, new, did one, like didn't the new one didn't I you i really like the new one i, I haven't played that. any of the old ones i do want to eventually so what else can you get for the gamecube that was really cool <sighs> so nintendo is sort of uh synonymous with peripherals uh a mm-hmm. little bit of little ads on add-on weird ones and, and great ones yeah and we're just going to go into a couple of well two really really great ones um, of course, they had things like the microphone and, and yeah. all that sort of jazz. But the Game Boy Advance player. Um, That's a cool, that was a cool thing that they did. Great. So you, you got this pack in. It had a little uh, a base that you clipped onto your GameCube. Uh, you put a disc in. It made it so you could put your Game Boy Advance games into the GameCube and play it on your TV. But um, you need the disc. Yeah, much like the Super NES, uh, Super Game Boy, mm-hmm. uh, where you could plug your original Game Boy games in there and play them on your TV. <laughs> I like they so, have to. Hey, you, everyone has a handy coin screwdriver. Yep, yep. Well, that's what you, you could use. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this this was a great thing, as we said earlier as well. Really super expensive to get the disc now. Not so much the uh, Game Boy Player itself. You can usually pick them up for about twenty dollars, but the disc is very very hard to find. Um, Woof, that ejects with some force. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to find one of those, but yeah. And how hard is it to find one that matches your GameCube? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are robots in the chat has also said the GameCube controller was pretty good. Still preferred by smash players. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the first and last Nintendo console to have trigger sensitivity. I believe so. Uh, we were going to do a segment on the show with GameCube. Oh, sorry. Uh, the best controllers. Best controllers. But we've had to cut for time because we spoke too much, but next show we will be talking about the top 10 
game controllers of all time. And yes, this this controller will feature in that. Absolutely. I can pretty much guarantee that. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that uh, I quite enjoyed was the Game Boy Advance cord, specifically for the Tingle Tuna. <laughs> I don't know what this is, man. Well, do I have a video for you? So you're playing Wind Waker. Whoa, was it yours place in 1993? Sure was. Uh, so you bring up on your screen the Tingle Tuna, which looks like a Game Boy Advance. You get the Game Boy... It's just a cord that plugs into your Game Boy Advance or your Game Boy SP. Put it in um, your GameCube, boot it up, and it actually has Tingle <laughs> coming to help you and you use it as a second controller or as a second screen. What? Yeah. That's cool. So if you just skip forward You know what? A bit, this right? is going to be one of those things that you say it's cool... You'd never use it. Oh, Lord, You no. do use it because there's a whole bunch of games. So Tingle then helps you as to where the treasures are on the map. So you can see on the left-hand side there, the Game Boy SP popped up with uh, Tingle helping you and the playing the game on the right. All right, that's pretty cool. It was like an additional screen with something that you already had. Yeah, okay. Um, so they use this technology with a lot of other games uh, for Pokemon games, transferring them over. Uh, Animal Crossing as well. Okay. And perhaps the greatest one, which Townsy has mentioned in the chat... Pac-Man Versus. Now, I've played this at some of the Retrospect um, uh, uh, AVCon uh, setups. Pac-Man Versus. I think I've got a, 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 a video there, Braden. Oh, yes. Let me have a look. Uh, Townsy in the chat. Is Retrospect going to be at the Tomic, yes. Toy and Comic Fair? Cool. Yes, yes, are they going to have this there? Uh, I think they will have to. I've got this game, by the way. Oh, uh, Pac-Man Versus was um, four-player Pac-Man. So, at okay. random, one person was Pac-Man. Three other people were the ghosts. Pac-Man had to try and get all the uh, tower pellets. Gloves. And the others had to get uh, be ghosts and try and oh, capture him. Okay. And you had one of these cords and plugged it into your GameCube. Player one had the GameCube uh, controller. Everyone else had their Game Boy Advance as their screen. That's okay, that's cool. pretty cool, So man. you're playing on the TV as Pac-Man and you have no idea where the ghosts are. And the ghosts know where you are because they're all teaming up because they can see on their little Game Boy Advance screen where you are and try and gang up on you. Oh, okay, that's cool. This is such a awesome game. That seems game. really unbalanced, though. No, well, you'd think that, but it, it's really not because of the power pellets and it plays like normal Pac-Man. Uh, I've played this so many times. Such a great game. When you did this thing with Animal Crossing, did on the Game Boy Advance, did you just come up with quotes about how much of a dick Tom Nook is? Yeah, I think that's what it was, the subtitle of the game. Uh, Animal Crossing GameCube, Tom Nook's Tom's a dick. A dick. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, really, really fun. You should play that. Uh, oh, just burp. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Didn't even uh, know that was coming. It was just a surprise burp. Yeah, it was that garlic bread you gave me before? Yep. Mm -mm. <sighs> That'll teach me. Anyway, Pac Man. Pac Man versus. It's a good pack. Um, Brayden. Yo. There's also a list there of all the other uh, games that use this bizarre peripheral. Can well, we just a, give a? It a, is a bizarre peripheral. A quick glimpse of the small amount of games that use the uh, Game Boy. Advanced link cable. Here we go. This is it. That that this. Are you I'm, fucking kidding me? I'm They're all the games. That's it. That How many it. of them use it well though? That's it. None of them. <laughs> well, you saw the tingle tuner. Yeah, no. Those, that, those okay, two that that Wind Waker one was it. awesome. You can't tell me Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban doesn't use the uh, <laughs> the it cable. It literally well. just unlocks new content. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what about Disney's Magical Mirror starring Mickey Mouse? Uh, that unlocks new content and <laughs> uploads items from another game. Okay, okay. But what about Hot Wheels Velocity X? Ooh. Hot Wheels Velocity X unlocks new content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Braden, have you ever played a GameCube? Uh, I think my neighbours had a GameCube and I remember playing something That's a on hard that a note. while ago. Um, like my like neighbours when I was like a kid, I mean. Um but yeah, I had no idea that it had all this like other little stuff with it, like the being able to play Game Boy games and everything, and the cable. The cable, that's cool. What was the microphone? Was that for Mario Party? Uh, it was for Hey You Pikachu. Oh no, that was the sixty four. There was a Pokemon Chan, not Pokemon Channel. It was a Pokemon game where I Pikachu it was a was Mario Party Pokemon. thing with a microphone. Yeah, probably that as well. Um, and hey, it's Anto or Anto, uh, social media guru in the chat has said Four Swords Adventures used the uh, Game Boy Advance Link cable spectacularly, and I completely agree with that. That was a really much like Pac Man. Yeah. Um, you had used the uh, Game Boy Advance yeah. plugged in as a controller. Yeah, okay. Mario Party Six and Pinball Voice Control. There you go. Pinball Voice, <laughs> left bumper, right bumper. Hey, floppy. Both bumpers. Yeah, floppy, mate. floppy. Yes, floppy. Yes, floppy. Yes. Hey, we are robots. Yes. Oh, that's not me. Deals. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, Donkey Konga as well. Mm. That was cool. Every time you play Congo, you play bongos to make Donkey Kong run. Oh yeah, the bongos. You know, I've seen people that have remapped those to play Sekiro. Yeah, with the bongos, ridiculous. Or Sekiro, or whatever you'd Sekiro. like to call it. Uh, free games and deals. I've gone with deals for Switch and PlayStation, and free games for Games Pass this week. Sweet. So on the Switch, uh, I've got a couple of very different games. Oh. Very different games. Uh, you can get South Park: The Stick of Truth. So this is the first South Park game. That uh, was it, Trey Stone and Matt Parker, or Trey Parker and Matt Stone? Trey Parker and Matt Stone uh, came out with. Uh, so this is all based around sort of the whole fantasy style movies, Lord of the Rings, all that that were out at the time. Uh, these games are great. I'm not even a huge fan of South Park. The games are really? great. They're I was really about w- to say I am not a huge fan of South Park. These games are great. Yeah, they are. They are really well written and they're great. It's a little satire and parody. Both crazy, by the way. Their parody Um, is fantastic. It Um, is. It's phenomenal. Ben, don't worry, it balances out. Everyone else on MMT is nuts for South Park and I have to stop them from yabbering on about it for 20 (laughs) minutes at a time. So you you can get a stick of truth for $22 down from 60 Oh, that's Ooh, good. That's it's, a mass, it's a massive, massive... If you haven't played Actually, it... Actually, Nintendo, it. as we record this, up until October 3rd, have a massive game sale. They have a huge sale. Massive. I was hard to pick things, and I and I actually picked things that weren't necessarily on that, because yep. everyone should look at those anyway. Uh, the other one I did pick is a Nintendo title. It's Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, the Gold Edition. This game is great. It's everyone XCOM. It means Mar- you haven't I just played don't it. like XCOM games. If so you play don't a Mario like game. XCOM strategy games... Unfortunately, this game is not for you. But if there you do, it's fantastic. It is fantastic. How good is this, Braden? It's honestly excellent. I, I love XCOM style games, which is why I'm one of the few people who's really excited for that new Marvel one coming out. Yeah, um, the Midnight Suns. Yeah, the, Chronic, the, yeah the card game part is weird, but I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed this way more than I expected to. So you can get this for 35 bucks down from 90 Damn. It's like good. good sales. Uh, over on the PlayStation Store, uh, they've got a bunch of good sales on, like stuff that's up to seventy five percent off. Well worth flicking through there. But just at a crack, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, the Ultimate Edition. I'm so glad you put this on. So this has got the Z Pass with it, or the Z Pass, mm-hmm. which gives you eight extra characters. You get a music pack and you get a commentator voice pack. Uh, this is normally one hundred and seventy bucks. You can get it for twenty seven dollars. You know, um, I've already bought this game twice. <laughs> I think I might buy it again because it has all the content for like 20 bucks. Yeah, and it has, it is such a good fighting game, man. It really is. Like, uh, so, hey, it's Anto, massive fighting game dude, loves his fighting games. Pretty sure he's a big fan of this one too. Yes, he has said he's <laughs> such a good fighter. Yes, in the content, in the, uh, in the chat. It, it's um, really good. It looks really good it too. It really, and it's been in the news recently, it really reminds me of uh, Marvel vs. Capcom too. Yeah. Just at like a, a Ooh, another a one of Anto's favorite games. Uh, well, it's a fantastic game. Incidentally, there's rumors that uh, uh, Marvel and Capcom uh, have been in talks to maybe remake that. Ooh, which that'd would be, be cool. Very nice. That'd be cool. But yeah, uh, 170 bucks worth of stuff for 27 bucks. If you like fighting games, or you like Dragon Ball Z, or you like both, get it. It's no brainer. Uh, the other game from PlayStation that I picked out was Nino Kuni 2: uh, Revenant Kingdom. I didn't Nino enjoy Donna. the first Nino Kuni. So this is the sequel to uh, Nino Kuni that was made by Studio Ghibli. Mm-hmm. Now this one's not made by Studio Ghibli, but they've carried on their art style and the storytelling style. Really cool RPG. Probably why you didn't like it because the first hour no, no, was no. a bit slow. No, 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 no. There was more action there than there was in Cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, it was more. I found like the little like side character really obnoxious. Okay. I, I um, did not enjoy him. I love this game. I bought the collector's edition when it came out with the music box and everything. That game, digitally, normally ninety nine ninety five, ninety nine ninety five down to thirteen dollars or fourteen dollars. Like it's just it's worth it. Yeah, get it. Um, new to Games Pass this week. Yeah, let's look at Games Pass. So if you, you didn't include the one that I really liked. Sorry about that. There's a lot of games on there. I <laughs> you didn't tell me which one, so I had to guess. <laughs> ben, don't worry. This one's got a mustache. Oh, well, that's yeah, okay. Subnautica Below Zero is coming to Game Pass. I don't know if you've played Subnautica. Yeah. So it's yeah, you have played Subnautica. Uh, well, I haven't, but I remember watching Dan play it on the stream when he was with us. Yeah, and so you know, it's like a survival collectathon craft thing. This guy, I like this guy because he's just shit goes wrong for him. He's a real dude. Uh, I haven't played this one. This looks is like a Below younger Zero. version of you. Yeah, a little bit. What? Younger? Yeah, he looks younger. Um. Oh shit, I'm dropping stuff. 
the yeah, main so thing with Subnautica 2 is that it is, if you enjoyed Subnautica, it is more, more Subnautica. Subnautica with cold stuff. I just love how happy that fish looks as it swims up to explode your face. Yeah, look at that, man. I love the comedy in it. He's just like, what a day. Ugh. Keep calm. Carry on. You'll be right. Uh, another one that I found on Games Pass, which is something that I don't, uh, I haven't played and I don't know, but I'm probably going to download just because I like the look of it, was Aragami 2. Um, Stealth Ninja gave me cool Tenchu vibes, which I thought was really good. Made me want to check it out. Why is it not you? white? It's not a very good ninja. It's supposed to be black. And melt into the shadows. I if you can do it while was. he wears white, then that's even better. But yeah, it looked really cool and it made me want to play it and it looks like Tenchi Stealth Assassin mixed with a Zelda. Oh, that's a good combo. Yeah, I know, right? You know it'd be better than that? What's that? Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> do you want to be better than that? Actually, Braydown no. versus the world? Braydown versus the world! Uh, Braydan vs. the World is a little game that we like to play where Braydan, representing Braydan, takes on the world, represented by Floppy, in a musical game quiz. What do I mean by that? I'm glad you thought that, and I replied with these words. Uh, I have four songs here that I will play from video games past, present, or future. Uh, Braydan and Floppy each have five guesses which they will take alternatively to try and work out from what game this piece of... Piece of music? This piece, this of, piece music. of music. This, this real pisser. This piece de resistance came from. Uh, they'll go up to five. They can try and guess beforehand. If they get it wrong, the other person gets the point. Blah, blah, blah. You'll pick it up. Uh, now, chat. Got a lot of new people in there tonight. Don't give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. 